Hello, hello, and welcome to the Northern Power Women podcast. This is our International Women's Day series. And uh, what we're doing this year is not just focusing on the one day, the one day where all of us fantastic women run around, attending things, speaking at things. This year, there is so much to say. We always talk about this not being one day. So we've created a whole season of it. And we're talking about sport. We're talking about that mental health, resilience, role modeling across the world of sport and everything, whether we're talking to athletes, whether we're talking to people who have created a business from sport or with sport or working in and around. That's what we want to tell the story of because we're so passionate here about the world of role models and we know sport is full of them. And this week, I am so delighted to be talking to the founder of Miss Kick, which is such an amazing brand. Um, Grace Fowler, welcome, welcome, welcome. Your bio is endless. You've been featured in everything. Forbes, Guardian, BBC, Sky, your former Liverpool, Manchester City footballer. And oh yeah, you just got a first class degree as well while you're at it. And then, oh yeah, I'm just going to set Miss Kick up. Welcome, welcome to the pod. I've been dying to get you on here for so long. Oh, what a lovely introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's, it's great to be here. Oh, and it is, and you talk, I love the way you, it's, you have such a positive vibe around you. I think that's definitely one of the things that I feel watching you and following you. That's what makes you, you, that positivity. And it's, I think it's really kind of contagious, infectious, that positivity. Is that always been you? Yeah, I think so. I, I think with everything I've always done, obviously there's good times and bad times, but remaining positive in every situation has is, is really helped me drive forward. Um, so yeah, I think even as a young girl, I've always I've always been that kind of way. And uh, yeah, it's so nice of you to say that as, as well. Oh, no, it is. I think, it has, I think it's an import, so important, I think, especially when there's challenges along the way, which I'm sure we'll get to today. Now, tell us, tell everyone out there, you know, about Miss Kick. Where did it come from? Because you started, as I said in the intro, playing, you started playing football. Um, and where did Miss Kick come from? Yeah, so I grew up playing football. It was such a, a big part of my life when I was a young girl. And when I didn't quite make it as a professional in the game, I decided I wanted to go to university and Although I did psychology, I knew that I wanted to do something in sport or in football. And I remember just being at uni and thinking, wow, when I was younger, wouldn't it have been great to have a brand or, or something that really represented me as a, as a woman and as a, a young girl? Because when I was growing up, I was wearing boys' kits and we were just treated so, so differently. So that kind of led to Miss Kick the Brand. And my dad organises a football tournament every year on the same field where I grew up playing as a, a young girl and we launched it and it went down really well and we sold all these t-shirts and I thought wow this could I could be on something here and so I haven't really looked back since then to be honest and um, so founded it when I was I was 21 at university and five years later it's it is what it is today <laughs> and, and this was literally you starting printing t-shirts on your mum's kitchen table is that right <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely, definitely the, the typical startup story. So I was buying them online and designing them myself and printing them myself, taking them to the post office. It's it all kind of started from there, really. My mum's really glad now that we don't have boxes everywhere. But um yeah, that's where it all, all started in the kitchen. And you talk about this as almost like, um, you know, we talk about entrepreneurs creating things that fill gaps in the market, but this was a personal journey and it's this really resonates with me because I'm, you know, sort of um I'm, I always, I like to say, I don't like to say older, probably just, you know, been around a bit longer, but I <laughs> always wanted, I was a big passion for football and it wasn't something that there was the opportunity to play in school or, you know, so I was a big Everton fan for my sins. You know, my nan always <laughs> said that, you know, I, I wanted to play football and, and she was like, you can, and we're going to set Everton ladies up and all this kind of thing. But there was, like you say, there was no, there was no kits. Um, there was nothing, I, you would just buy it, this was a youth at the time, so there was nothing that sort of gave that, that women's fit or anything like that. Is it not crazy that we fast forward all these years on and we've still had the sort of the, I suppose the fiasco or debacle that happened in the summer with Mary Earp shirt? Sure. It's madness, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. Like we think, especially reflecting on when I used to play and where it is now, of course, I'm a huge advocate for the game. And I've always said women's football is going to grow, but the, the sort of trajectory it's been on, not just here in the UK, but across the world has been absolutely amazing. And of course, it, it was upsetting to see 
the things around Mary Apes and hair share, um, which does highlight that there is still those barriers that girls and women face, especially when it comes to representation, whether that's through a goalie shirt in store or me just being a footballer and being able to go into a high street store and buy a football shirt that fits me. Um, so yeah, it's positive, it's great, and I'm so excited for the game. But we, like you say, there's still these things that kind of crop up along the way that remind us that you know we've still got to keep pushing on and, and doing our best to doing our own bit in in order to grow. I think one of the things that stood out for me in the last couple of years is that two years in a row, the the BBC Sports Personality of the Year has been has been won uh, not just by a footballer but a female footballer. Like you've got to high five that, right? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Like what the Lionesses have done for women's football in this country is unbelievable. And it's so amazing that they're getting these accolades because it's not for more than they deserve. Um, So, yeah, it's it's amazing and, and long may it continue. And one of the things um, last year, um, one of the first things or one of the things that the, the Lionesses have done is they've used that, if you like, that voice and that platform for good. And so for them to go in and really sort of champion and advocate, um, every girl should be able to play at grassroots, I think is absolutely amazing. And I know sort of grassroots and com- community is is really, that's, I when I've heard you interview before and I've read, you know, sort of, um, your stories and stuff community is I feel is the thing that really sparks you it's the thing that you love more than anything is that power of the community is that right yeah absolutely when honestly when we go to games or I'm out and about and I see the young girls in the misket hoodie or the misket headband I'm just like wow it's it's so amazing and there's been so many incredible stories about you know it's more than just a brand to these parents and to these young girls we've had girls all the way up in Scotland and they went to a football camp and they were the only two girls there with all these boys but they both had a miss kick headband on and they were able to connect over that and and sort of make friends and girls now when we have a community chat who might not have friends of themselves to go to games with but now they've made friends through the brands and can go to watch Man United or Man City together so that's what really like gets me going and when I think about success and what we've achieved those moments to me mean more to me than anything because I know what it's like to be that young girl who might be the only one in school who likes football um so yeah community is at the heart of everything we do whether that's through activations we bring girls into our office and we get them to try on different products and ask for their feedback because we feel that will be what where we'll win if we really listen to our, our community um so yeah, it's a yeah big part of what we do at Miskick. It, and it does feel really personal. It feels like this is what you would have wanted back in the day when you were getting into football, planning your career of, you know, obviously wanted to play, you know, on, on the, the top level. So this is, is this every time you get those young girls in your office, do you think that was me? <laughs> Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, I love asking. Even when we're doing photo shoots and stuff, I'm always asking them questions about like what position they play, what's their favorite player, um, like where do you play, what's it like playing at grassroots. Like, I just love learning about them and finding out more. But I'm finding actually now more so. Um, so many different girls play football now, and it's amazing. It's not just one one stereotype. There's all, and it it plays into what we do when we're thinking about color and fit and sizing and we want to be able to cater to all those girls which is is amazing to see and what is the what's the I suppose two questions here what's the advice um that you love to pass on and what's what's been the the question that I suppose has either challenged you or motivated you more from one of these young girls advice I think because I get asked a lot about a, a lot of them want to have a career in sport um I might jump on a quick call with them and I always say to them to follow the passion and and what they really enjoy doing so I know when I was their age I could never have called that I was going to be doing this there's no way but the one thread that's got me through everything is football and so I always say to them if you want to build a career around something make sure you love it and passionate about it because one you're probably likely to be good at it if (laughs) if you find it passionate and two things are going to go wrong um so it's important you have that resilience and if you care then you're more likely to keep pushing through I know one of the things that you're really really passionate about is the give back as well and Mm -hmm. you donate a percentage of your um um sales to charity you have your own foundation giving back this is it clearly is part of your value set yeah definitely so even when I had the idea for Miss Kick 
I definitely wanted to build a successful business, but all the way through in my journey, we've had some sort of vehicle that enabled us to give back. So when it was just me selling t-shirts, it would be like, I would just put a bit of money aside and we'd buy footballs and, and stuff for the girls. But as the company's grown, it felt like the charity was the right thing to do. So yeah, we donate a percentage of our um, sales to that charity. And that's all about giving girls opportunities to get involved in football on and off the pitch. Um, it's a personally for me it's an amazing thing to do and I love being able to do that and I think it really solidifies to people who we are as a as a brand and that we're not just about you know selling hoodies we actually want to make a difference as well um which has always been really important to me as we've as we've kind of grown and is that so much more than football it feels like is that that should passion of the the customers that you see but so and I suppose you don't see them as customers it is your community as well yeah yeah definitely and, sorry <laughs> no I was just gonna say the um yeah I think when we can support them away away from just product I think that really um yeah, like I say drives home that message which is good and you talked a, a little bit then about um sort of making mistakes and doing things wrong and and how you know that helps us learn is you know I, I think you've got to think like that it's tough isn't it you know you talk about googling how to set a business or how to create a logo <laughs> how to how to build a strategy is that does that learning and that because I don't oh, think it's yeah. fa failing it's it's learning it's learning learning to recover sometimes isn't it oh absolutely like even now when like you made that lovely introduction about all the things we've achieved even right now in this very moment in time we're still in that like learning phase and, and growth phase and it's it's easy to set up a business but it's hard to scale a business and I'm definitely finding that at the moment it's almost two different things and you have to have thick skin and yeah like you I came out of uni and I'd set up this business and I didn't like I didn't I didn't know trademarks accountancy website all these things and I just think like if you just keep trying and and you're going to make mistakes. I make mistakes every single day. There's, if I could turn back time two, three years and know what I'd know now, I would do so much differently. But you also got to be kind to yourself and, and think, you know what, you made the right decision with the information you had at the time in your life. And so, yeah, it's it's painful. It's growth. But I know when I look at myself as a person, I think I've learned so much. And no matter what happens or what, what happens moving forward, I've, no one can take that away from me. Um, so yeah, it's it's tough, but it's so rewarding at the same time. And what do you do to celebrate? <laughs> celebrate. We get a Starbucks every Friday. <laughs> That's <a> celebration. <laughs> we've made it. It's all about, it's all about the small wins, isn't it? Yeah. It's all about the small wins, isn't it? You kind of. I think it's it's so important to high five those achievements because yeah. I think when people see, or even if it's if it, you, you know celebrating with your team, it's really important because it's it is tough, isn't it? It's tough learning all yeah. this stuff that you you never get the opportunity to. Talk. So um, I don't know if you've ever come across uh, Young Enterprise. Um, you know, the, the twenty years now, and one of the big drives at the moment is that financial education because it's something mm. we you don't get at all is it in school no absolutely not and it's so strange that it's not because it plays such a big part in your personal life and if you want to go and set up a business so yeah it's it's great to hear that I wish I'd had that <laughs> five years ago and, 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 and talking about sort of that education and passing on that skills or learning I know that leadership is is really um, a big thing for you and what you like to focus on looking at the leaders of the future what does the future of leadership in sport football look like you know because there are so so many uh, so few sort of leaders at, at certain levels whether it be coaches um, or across leadership in the game what what do you think we what what do you think is there a solution to this where do we start is it grassroots is it you know more highlighting people at senior level yeah, it's so, you're so right. If we look at sort of like, especially female representation in football, it's still lacking. Um, I think we've just got to keep knocking on the door and answering, asking questions and, and pushing forward. We've got amazing role models like Yvonne Harrison, you mentioned earlier, um, Emma Hayes, um, people like that who are real trailblazers and, and role models. And I think the more we can highlight people like them, whether that's through the media or through opportunities within within the sport, young girls coming through will see them and be like, oh, I can be like them as well. Um, so I think that's really important. And I know at talking about sort of a grassroots level as well, there's also a lack of female coaches. And it's important that girls see 
those female role models even at that level so um i think it has to go from the top down but also the bottom up as well and then yeah the more the more the visibility is there the more girls can dream of sort of being in those positions and and you've talked before about being brave um how did you get brave could people listening to this people who've come across people who fangirled you at a match when they've seen they realize that that amazing woman over there wearing the miss kick hoodie is miss kick herself <laughs> how do you get brave the reason why i'm so passionate about sport and football is because i believe those foundations have set me up for what i'm doing now and um, so i think the fact that i had to play at liverpool and city and and be challenged and um, like go through struggle and understand the value of hard work really has helped me with what I'm doing now at, at Miss Kick. And I think I have the mindset of even though I'm not 21 anymore, I think at this age, I've got literally no, I've got, don't have a mortgage. I don't have all these sort of boundaries. Why not just give it a go and try it? What is the absolute worst thing that could possibly happen? Like, yeah, it could go wrong or you could fail. But for me, it's about understanding that, like, it's all those learnings that I would never have got if I'd have gone and just sat in a job that I didn't really like and just kind of mulled through life. I thought if I just take that one step and I think it's about building confidence over time. If you take one step and you're like, all right, today I'm going to I'm going to learn about Shopify and the website and it's about breaking it down and and you kind of learn as you go along actually I can do this you've got to build that up over time it doesn't just happen overnight um so yeah it's a long like I've been doing this now for five years so it's it's been a long process the person who sits today isn't the person who was five years ago um so yeah I think it's just about taking just take the leap and and just honestly what is the worst thing that could possibly happen we've had a pandemic in the middle of that which I think came at a time where um you were just on that kind of fabulous kind of upwards spike and then the pandemic came where did you get that mental strength and resilience to kind of deal with all the stuff that was happening at that time in a fledgling business yeah it was it was well it's bad time for everyone I think <laughs> um so we were kind of going through our funding round and it all got kind of paused at that time but I remember thinking this is such a unique opportunity and how can I make the most of it I'm going to be have all the spare time and it was just about thinking about what I can do so instead we, we looked at our social media and, and growing the community and and because everyone was sat at home doing nothing so it was just about kind of seeing the opportunity even though the actual circumstances were really bad um but the yeah COVID was tough but it gave me that time to reflect and we actually came out of COVID with a new logo and new branding which if I hadn't have had that time to redo then I would never have done it um, so yeah, it didn't work out too bad in the end, but it was there's hard. You, there's an optimism. There's Grace, <laughs> the optimist again. And, and, and finally, what is next for Grace? What's next for Miss Kick? Oh, what's next? I think what we're working on at the moment is really exciting. So traditionally, Miss Kick's been more apparel and, and leisure wear. So hoodies, t-shirts, things like that. And, the, and they're great. But when we speak to our community and we ask for feedback, the biggest thing we get told all the time is about on pitch products, about kit not fitting right and not having that variety and choice, which is crazy considering all the growth in the game and, and everything that's happening. So there's definitely a gap there that needs to be be solved. So at the moment, we're really developing our team wear and, and offering Miss Kit kits and um, making sure they fit right. They look great. They're designed nicely, not just off the shelf, boring colors. So girls can really feel confident, comfortable. So that's kind of what we're working on on a business level. Then personally, I don't really know. I'll probably still be here um, <laughs> plugging away. Um, yeah, just just taking each day as it comes. I think at the moment, like I said, we we've we're, people look at the business and think, wow, but there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes, a lot of ups and downs. So I'm just taking each day as it comes in and doing my best to do all I can. Uh be more grace is what I say be brave uh, be optimistic uh, be awesome grace thank you so much for joining us on today's podcast it's been a joy to watch you fly and please keep doing that and inspiring the next gen and influencing and informing those you know to break through those ceilings absolutely thank you so much for having me 
on. Thank all of you for listening. I love this series. I love having these amazing conversations with these different women from different parts of the world of sport, playing it, leading it, doing a bit of both, creating, innovating, entrepreneurs, um, but all with different messages. So thank you so much. Thank you to each of them for helping us celebrate this whole season of International Women's Day weeks, which is great, not days. Um, And thank you so much. Please do stay connected on all our socials at North Power Women on Twitter and Northern Power on all the others. And join in on all of our conversations on our digital hub, wearepower.net. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Simone. This is the Northern Power Women podcast, a What Goes on Media production.